This child secretly comes in the night, oh this child Hiding a heavenly light, oh this child Coming to us like a stranger, this heavenly child This child, heaven comes down now to be with us here Heavenly love and mercy appear Softly in awe and wonder come near To this heavenly child This child rising on us like the sun of oh, this child Given to light every one of oh, this child Guiding our feet on the pathway To peace on earth this child, heaven come down now to be with us here. Heavenly love and mercy appear. Softly in awe and wonder come near to this heavenly child. This child, raising the humble and poor. This child, making the proud ones to fall. This child. Filling the hungry with good things, this heavenly child. This child, heaven come down now to be with us here. Heavenly love and mercy appear, softly in all and wonder come near to this heavenly child. Welcome to our service today. Today we're celebrating Candlemas, or the presentation of Christ. The festival which takes a last look back at Christmas before we turn our attention to Lent and to Easter. Remember today the visit of Mary and Joseph to the temple in Jerusalem with the baby Jesus. And we remember the words of Simeon and Anna. We're going to begin by saying the collect together. Almighty and ever-living God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple in substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to sing the song, Like a Candle Flame, which reminds us that Jesus came into our dark world to bring light. Holy Father, 
God is with us, hallelujah. Come to save us, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The closer we come to the light, the more we may be aware of the darkness in our lives and in our world too. So we bring all of this into the light of Jesus and we say together, Father oh, eternal, giver of light and grace. We have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now Jerome is going to read our first reading. The first reading for today is taken from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through to 18. It is titled, The One Who Leads Us to Salvation. Since the children, as he calls them, are people of flesh and blood, Jesus himself became like them and shared their human nature. He did this so that through his death he might destroy the devil, who has the power over death and in this way set free those who were slaves all their lives because of the fear of death. For it is clear that it is not the angels that he helps. Instead, as the scripture says, he helps the descendants of Abraham. This means that he had to become like his brothers in every way, in order to be their faithful and merciful high priest in the service to God, so that the people's sins would be forgiven. And now he can help those who are tempted, because he himself was tempted and suffered. Our second reading tells the story of the presentation of Jesus in the temple. And I'd like us to try something a little bit different. As Jerome reads it for us, I'd like to invite you to perhaps close your eyes and really try to enter the story in your imagination. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you maybe even smell? And where are you in the story? The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification, as the law of Moses commanded. So they took the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. They also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of doves 
or two young pigeons as required by the law of the Lord. At that time, there was a man named Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was a good, God-fearing man and was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple. When the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do for him what the law required, Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise, and you may let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to your people Israel. The child's mother and father were amazed at the things Simeon said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. There was a very old prophetess, a widow named Anna, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She had been married for only seven years and was now 84 years old. She never left the temple. Day and night she worshipped God, fasting and praying. That very same hour she arrived and gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting for God to set Jerusalem free. When Joseph and Mary had finished doing all that was required by the law of the Lord, they returned to their home in the town of Nazareth in Galilee. The child grew and became strong. He was full of wisdom and God's blessings were upon him. I wonder what you noticed as you imagined that scene. I wonder where you were in the story. Were you somewhere right up close to the baby and his parents? Or were you perhaps further away in the shadows watching from a distance. If you noticed anything that seemed important, you might want to note it down so that you can think about it some more later. If you didn't notice anything in particular and didn't find that exercise helpful, don't worry, not everyone finds it helpful to engage with the Bible in this way. When I tried this at home, listening on my laptop, I was most struck by the size of the building, the sense of echoing space. It was a bit like being in a vast cathedral. It was dark. There were groups of people moving about, subdued voices echoing around, and different kinds of things going on all at the same time. It seemed to be a place of many visitors, some fleeting, some staying much longer, some just looking, others deep in prayer, some frequent and familiar visitors, others seeing the place for the first time. When Jesus comes to his temple for his first visit, He comes not with a fanfare or a great procession. 
There's no special ceremony to welcome the King of Glory. Just an apparently ordinary baby and his parents coming to observe the ordinary rites for any firstborn son. One little group among the many visitors that day. And yet, something extraordinary happens. The great painter Rembrandt painted two different versions of this picture. Here's how he painted it in 1631, when he was aged 25. We see the vast building, partly ruined, echoing, the crowds of people, the attendants, Mary and Joseph. In some ways, Mary is as much the focus of this painting as Jesus. The richly robed Simeon is holding the baby and the light of Christ streams out onto his upturned face as he speaks. This is the painting of an ambitious young man early in his career. He sincerely wants to show this holy moment, but he also wants us to know that he can paint it. Rembrandt went back to this subject much later in his life. In fact, in 1669, the same year that he died. By this time, he was an old man and his eyesight was failing. And it's this second painting that I want to look, want to look at with you much more closely. Here's a much simpler, much more intimate portrayal. All of the background and the bustle has gone, apart from one other shadowy person so that we're focused in on the old man and the baby. Rembrandt has moved on, and this is what now interests him. So what does this second picture tell us? Look at the old man's eyes. He seems to be blind, or nearly so, as was Rembrandt. He's been waiting a long time for God to fulfil his promise that he'll see the Lord's Messiah before he dies. He's very frail. He walks more by faith than by sight these days. But the Holy Spirit keeps him going, keeps on drawing him back to the temple to pray. Notice his hands. They're arthritic, but they're outstretched. Fingers almost together. He's in the middle of praying, and someone has gently placed the baby across his outstretched arms. This was not the answer he expected, or not at that moment anyway. We get our hands ready, don't we, when we think someone's giving us a baby to hold. Sometimes it takes us a while to work out which way round to move them. Simeon has been waiting praying, hoping for so long, and suddenly the moment has taken him by surprise. There's something about Simeon's attitude which also suggests offering. Simeon offers himself to God in prayer, and God offers himself to Simeon and to us all as a baby. The baby sees Simeon or rather gazes at him in that way that babies have of staring. Small babies, as you probably know, can't focus well, although I believe they can from a very, very young age make out a face from when they're lying in someone's arms. Jesus takes in Simeon's face and light from Jesus' presence shines onto the old man's face so that he too is bathed in glory. His mouth is opening, ready to speak. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise and you may let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to your people Israel. And Simeon 
we're told, has a great deal more to say to Mary and Joseph. And Anna, too, has much to say to all those who are longing and hoping for God's Messiah to come. So what does this story and this depiction of this story have to say to us in our particular circumstances? Many of us are very busy keeping on working and holding life together on a day-to-day -day basis just now. But life is far from normal and we too are waiting and praying for so much. It's been going on for a long time now. Praying may be the only thing we can do about the big things and it's the most important thing we can do. Simeon and Anna knew that. The way ahead is not yet clear and the timing of any return to normality feels very uncertain. We too have to live more by faith than by sight just now. We have to learn patience and just keep going with our routines, including the routines of prayer and worship, just as Simeon and Anna did. God's answers to our prayers may not come when we expect, and they may be different from what we expect. But God is faithful, and he will answer. So like Simeon, like Anna, we continue to offer ourselves to God, and he continues to offer himself to us. Jesus sees us. He really sees us. He sees us as we are, with all our frailties, our needs, our griefs, our frustrations, and our faithfulness despite it all. We are seen and known and loved by God. I said at the beginning of the service, that at Candlemas, we look back to the baby in the manger. But we also begin to look forward to the man who went to the cross for us. Here is our light and our salvation. Here is the way ahead. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to listen to Anne singing those words of Simeon. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together, and then Nikki will lead our intercessions. Our My Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. We give thanks for knowledge of our salvation, seen not with the eye of sight, but of faith. Give to your church the spirit of prophecy to proclaim your light that has been given to all nations. As Mary and Joseph made their offering according to the law, so may all Christian people offer their prayers and praises for the gift of the Son according to his new law of love. Bless all of those here in our community, working to show that the love of God reaches to the ends of the earth. In these unprecedented times, many people are going above and beyond what is reasonable and normal to protect the vulnerable, heal the sick, ensure that our streets are clean and safe and our children have access to the education they deserve, even whilst we all stay at home. Help all of those who serve to face their anxieties, fear of the virus, fear of exhaustion, fear for the strain and risk to their own families and relationships. Grant them strength and rest to recuperate for the work still to be done. We pray for your world in these unprecedented times and rejoice in the breadth and diversity of your humanity. May we all learn to live together, to celebrate the gifts and the differences that are the richness of your creation. Shine the light of your salvation in all the dark places, to bring hope to those who feel they are beyond hope, love to those who feel they are unlovable, and strength to those who feel weak and helpless, that they may all thrive in your grace. Bless and protect the vulnerable ones of our common humanity. The babies, those living in poverty, the aged and infirm. Have mercy on parents whose hearts are pierced by the loss or suffering of their children. The last year has been hard for many, but for our children and young people, loss of friends, freedom and opportunities will affect them for many years to come. We pray particularly for those many young people whose mental or physical health has been harmed by long periods of time spent at home. Wrap them in your love and grant them your grace. Have mercy on all who suffer in mind, body or spirit. As the hope of the vaccine spreads across our communities, may it bring with it reassurance to all those who are anxious. Let the light of hope shine through their darkness and give them comfort. We remember particularly those in our own community and in a moment of quiet bring to you those known only to ourselves. May the light that was brought by the Son of God be their light in their time of darkness. We pray in the name of Christ, our light and our salvation. Us, Heavenly Father, lead us o'er the world's tempestuous sea. Guard us, guide us, keep us, feed us, for we have no help but Thee. Yet possess 
sing every blessing if our God our Father be. Savior, breathe forgiveness o'er us, all our weakness thou dost know. Thou didst tread this earth before us, Thou didst feel its keenest woe. Self-denying, death-defying, Thou to Calvary didst go. Spirit of our God descending, Fill our hearts with heavenly joy. Love with every passion blending, Pleasure that can never cloy. Thus provided, pardoned, guided, Nothing can our peace destroy. Thus provided, pardoned, guided, nothing can our peace destroy. Lord, you fulfilled the hope of Simeon and Anna, who lived to welcome the Messiah. Keep us constant in hope and prayer as we follow our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.